Welcome to Small Business Big Dreams, where every episode is a new journey into the world of entrepreneurs who are daring to dream big. In this corner of the internet, we're going to celebrate the innovation and the perseverance it takes to turn small ventures into booming successes. These small businesses aren't just places to shop, they're actually hubs of creativity and passion, each with its own amazing story. From the mom and pop shops to the innovative startups, we're going to explore it all. You'll meet the faces behind the brands, hear their stories, and maybe even get inspired to start your own venture. Whether you're a longtime local or new in town, come along with me for the ride and let's celebrate the backbone of our communities one small business at a time. Now let's dream big and spread some love for our local heroes. All right, welcome back to another week with Small Business Big Dreams. I'm your host, Eric Boll, and I'm excited to introduce you to Sarah Sneltonson here with me today, a uh, local that actually I met, was introduced actually no, by another small business, uh, Vita, uh, Treat, oh my God, why am I, Treat, Treat Diva. Diva. There we go. I knew I was going to get it. Um, and Sarah actually helped me with some of the stuff when I was still running the Lake County Jeep Club, and then... Uh, she helped me with a really cool gift for my wife for uh, after we got married um, with our wedding song. Um, well, welcome, Sarah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to talk to you. Um, Sarah owns Buffalo Plaid. And give us the other favorite pitch. What is Buffalo Plaid? So we are a uh, laser engraved um, and sign gift company. It's kind of a little bit of everything. Um, we really offer, we want to take your ideas that you see online or concepts that you have and turn them either into like home decor or a gift for a friend. Um, we recently started doing laser engraving um, on cups and glasses and doing wedding party, party and um Baby shower gifts and just a little, so yeah. <laughs> a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so I, I meant to ask, I wanted to ask this for a while. Buffalo plaid, where's the name come from? Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to teach you something. <laughs> I love learning. Here okay. We go. You're okay. going to think this is the dumbest thing ever. But um, I literally had this thought that I was like, okay, I want to have a company and I know I'm going to be working with wood because it was just what I had in my mind. And when I thought of wood, I thought of Paul Bunyan. And when I thought of Paul Bunyan, I thought of flannel. The actual name for flannel is Buffalo Plaid. And so really? I kind of just started running with it. And then that was it. Just and I'm stuck. like, and what's another word, like, word for like a workshop or like a working space? Like, oh, studios. So Buffalo Plaid, Plaid studios. studios. And that's it. And the logo has morphed and I've, I've dropped the pattern, which needed to happen for a long time. My logo is so much it more. So had like a plaid. Oh, there was a buffalo like, too. And a buffalo? There was a buffalo. Oh, I don't, I, you know, me, like, I have a little bit of trauma that. from that logo, but um, yeah. So <laughs> there was an actual like flannel circle with a buffalo in the middle and a B and a P and an S. And um, I'm really thankful that that's gone and just growth is a beautiful thing because now my logo is much more sophisticated and simple <laughs> and we drop the studios most times in conversations is just Buffalo Plaid or BP. And um, so, yeah, there was no like real significance other than that weird rabbit hole I went down just in my brain. Just had a thing brain. for Paul Bunyan at one point <laughs> I and just, I just had to own it, you know. <laughs> and I just thought, well, let's just bring this, you know, all the way to life and name a whole company after him. No. So it just was it was so weird. And um, I look back now at that train of thought and I'm like, what the heck was I thinking? But it all worked out. It's fine. That's it's just, a, it's a, just a name, I mean, you know? Just, seriously, it is. I mean, I can uh, <laughs> sort of relate, I guess. Um, the name of the podcast, I actually changed it like days before it launched really yeah it was originally gonna be called digging in and i was talking to people about it as being digging in and then i sent it to somebody and they were like i did a trailer and like the little opening intro and with the logo and they're like i thought it was gonna be about like construction or gems and rocks and i was like oh god scrap everything why didn't so I, someone tell yeah, me yeah, right why did it take this long for a random stranger basically for me like tell me this like where were my friends and family on this one when like, you reached out for me to do this podcast it was digging in and there was. was a shovel in the yeah. logo i remember yeah. it now that you're saying this to me and then this concept of like small business big dreams i was like Oh, this makes so much, much sense. sense. So yeah. much more sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I love it. I'm so excited to be here. I'm honored to be here, Thank truly, you. because hey, this is like, this is so selfless of you to offer to sit down with friends, family, and strangers to share um, their passion and what it takes 100%. to like really make something like this work. So this is super cool. And I love the name. 
<laughs> Thank you. It makes way more sense. Um, I mean, the, the digging in made sense, but I had to tell a story for it to make sense. Yes. And I was like, well, that doesn't like work. Like, I have then. to try like, too hard, like, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like trying yeah. to explain the punchline of a joke. Yeah. I just, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cringe. <All right>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, plus, I like the, uh, you'll appreciate this when I was thinking about it too from a branding perspective, like the letters even, like, SBBD, like mm-hmm. if I went to go like monogram different things and get into, you know, maybe engrave a cup or something. Maybe, yeah. You know, it just worked better. <laughs> uh, there was just better options with it. And I was like, well, I mean, I could have eventually changed it, but I'm glad I did it before actually all, launching. launching yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know, and like having the regret of plaids and buffaloes. And yeah, exactly. Right oh, God. <laughs> um, so let's rewind in time. When did Buffalo plaids start and how did you, how did it even come to existence? So, um, there was a point in time where I was working three jobs and I had two kids at the time, right? So three like jobs and three two kids. kids. So not at the time. I still have them. They are alive and well. Okay. Just check so, in. So, <laughs> damn. Jeez Louise. <laughs> so I was, I was working a full-time job at a law office, um, working in estate planning. And then I have been with a direct sell company, direct selling company for 11 years. So okay. that's just been something that's always been a constant. And then I had this idea that I needed something that was for me. And um, in 2018, it was like a, a big year of like loss and growth for me. So we had just um, the year prior, we had found out my mom was sick. The year of 2018, she passed away oh, and I was five months pregnant with my son. So past getting through that, it was, there was a lot of like depression and anxiety and postpartum. And so I kind of started getting into therapy and really just trying to like heal. Right. And so, um, in November of 2018, I was talking with my husband. I'm like, I just need something for me because my therapist had said like, Hey, what are you doing? That's for you. Because you're like, you're raising two kids. You've got this house and you're going to work and you're doing all these things. But like, what is for Sarah? And take notes. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like, what is for Sarah? And I, and so I started talking to my husband and I told him, I said that I think that I just need something for me. So the concept of Buffalo plaid was born, but I didn't really know what it was going to look like yet. I knew that like growing up, I would refinish furniture with my dad as like a child. And that was always fun. And like, there was like a scent memory tied to that too, of like stain and wood. And like, you know, if you've smelled it, you know, know, like what that, and so Um, I knew that I wanted to do something with that. And so I just started slowly like making signs and I was like stenciling them or hand painting them. And I didn't have the ability to laser anything cause I was, I didn't even own it. Right. Yeah. It was just something I was exploring, um, through who 20, are ma- who are you making? Just-, just for anyone, like for myself, oh, I still have the first sign I ever yeah. made in my garage. What does it say? It says the Sneltons okay. and it says Thank EST yeah, yeah, yeah. 2015 under it. Right. It is God awful. It is the ugliest sign I've ever seen in my life. I literally showed it oh, to my husband, John. But that's a John, turning point in your life. A thousand percent. So I showed it to John and I was like, I'm done. I quit. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. Like this looks like garbage. And he's like, no, it's okay. Like you can only go up from here. Right. And he was just always has been like, <laughs> really, way to put it. that's yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is love. And so I'm like, okay, so I just kept trying to perfect my craft and I just kept trying different paints and different wood and different trim and stain and whatever. And, um, I went through that first, that was like my first year of growth. So November, 2018 to 2019, I was like, okay, you know, and I'm starting to see like things are getting heavy. My life is getting heavy. I feel like now I'm spread way too thin. I've got a nine month old, you know, and, and then a year and a half year old. And I was, I had this moment sitting at my kitchen table. I'm working my nine to five from home that day. And my son is sitting in this bumbo on the floor and my daughter's in the living room and they're both crying and I just lost it. Right. And I just yelled because I, I didn't know what else to do. I was just completely overwhelmed. And then I cried. And so then the three of us are just sitting there crying. Right. <laughs> And I'm I want to like, cry just thinking yeah, about it, it was, you right now. It was awful. Yeah. And um, it was a pivotal moment in my life where I said, like, something has got to go. Yeah. Yep. And there is nothing in this world more important to me than being a mom and being with my kids and being, like, the best version of myself for them. And so I told John, I said, I have to leave my 9 to 5. Like, I don't know that and I'm made to be – This is the law firm, firm thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I don't know that I'm, like, made – to be a stay at home mom, but I, I can be a work at home mom. I like and that. so that Ooh. was like a big 
reckoning for me of like, I can't do all of these things, but I do this one really well. And I do this one really well. So like, that's got to go. I mean, that self relationship is so powerful. It was and some people don't get there. Sometimes. Yeah. And uh, that's why therapy is amazing. <laughs> right. Just all working. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag therapy, uh, working through a lot of the things and then just realizing like this has to happen for me and just so that I can be the best version of myself for my kids. And so um, I ended up by February, the end of February of 2020. 2020. Oh my God. Right oh yes. COVID. Oh yes. Oh no. I quit my nine to five. And then two weeks later, the entire world shut down. Uh, and about, I was like, like, work from home mom is like double down. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? And, and, and I am like a woman of faith. So I'm praying over this, right? I'm like, God, please tell me that I did not just make the biggest mistake of my life because then the law office just went remote for three years, right? And I'm like, what did I do? I tried to be very sensitive when I talk about this because I people have asked me like, you started a business during COVID, like, and I, and I, that's when I really truly started pursuing it, right? It was in 2020. And and I try to be sensitive because like my own grandfather like passed away from COVID in the hospital alone, right? So I understand how terrible that time truly was for businesses and for families, for my own family. Um, but what I tried to do was was almost pivot my thinking and be like, how can we bring joy to the world in a time where like no one's leaving their house, you're six feet apart. I yeah. pride myself in building relationships with people. I love that. That is, meeting uh, new yes. people. And when I couldn't do that outside of my house and I was stuck with the same three people every yep. day, um, that was really hard for me. And I think it was hard for a lot of people. Just mm-hmm. socially speaking, you completely lose like touch of like what is going on in other people's lives. And then we see this big boom in social media and, and, and all this other stuff because everybody wants to know, what are you doing when I can't be with you, right? Yeah. And so the water we talks gone, you know, yes. and we, we thrive on that. Oh my you know? gosh. Yeah. And I was like the best well, of the of best. Yeah, Let yeah. me <laughs> tell you, I would go into that office and I would just have all the things to talk about because I spent the rest of my days with a nine month, uh, you know, and talk a, to an adult. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's go. It was yeah, amazing. Right? Yeah. I probably should have been fired truthfully, but <laughs> it's fine. I made it. Um, but so I, um, you know, just thinking about like what that looked like, we were able to just kind of look at the situation that we were in for what it was and, we started offering the ability to like send a gift to a friend for their birthday with a handwritten note, right? Or like someone's passed away and we have a sign that's like, you know, for those that are in heaven, you know, there's a piece of heaven in our home. And that was like, Mm -hmm. continues to be one of our like biggest sellers, unfortunately, but it's something that brings like, almost like beauty from the ashes, right? And and it's a way to memorialize these people who have passed. Um, And I truly like, especially because something like that is so near and dear to my heart. Like my mom was my absolute best friend in the world. Um, And, and I feel like I was completely robbed. I feel like if I can bring that joy into someone else's heart and in their home from just something we make, that's really where we thrived through COVID was to just bring some joy. Like you're sitting on the couch working from home and there's like a blank spot on your wall. Like a sign would look really nice there, you know, and a lot of people would literally text us and be like, Hey, you know, I have this spot on my wall. What do you think I should put here? You know, and we would Some help them. Freedom. I yeah. Love that. Oh, that's my favorite. Like I'll run with your design a thousand percent, but I really love when someone says like, I trust you, this is your like Avenue, whatever you think we should do, let's do it. And that's like, so cool. that's like, so it's like such an honor that yeah. someone would think so highly, right. Of like, I don't necessarily know my design, but like my ability <laughs> but, to fill yeah, that space on their yeah. wall, right? They're giving you a lot of, ho- you know, it's essentially, right? Like a total stranger. Like I've seen your stuff. It's incredible. Like help me, you know, do this. That's something that's going to be meaningful for me. Yes. And, but I have no idea what to do. Right. I mean, that that's yeah. so cool. Cause like, I mean, most of the time it's like grab and go stuff from shelves, right? Right. Like here it's, it's. The cu- you're like truly in the yeah. Like, have space. you seen that? Um, the sign. It's like a video that's like someone walks into like his mom's kitchen and there he's like reading the signs off of her wall and it says like let's eat or you know he's like um, what or gather is like one of the big things that's always in yeah. someone's house like these like very like typical yeah. signs you would find coffee on first. someone yeah, yeah coffee first like, right well, duh, but, yeah you know. <laughs> <laughs> like those kinds of signs that you would normally see in someone's house yeah that you can get from a box store but like there's so much more that comes when you shop small. And I have like such an appreciation for that. It's one of the reasons why I choose to shop small. And I can just know that there's like an actual family behind 
where you're buying from, right? It just makes all the difference. Well, you're doing this all from your house. Yes. Still to this day. Yes, to yeah. this day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So like I said, it was not built to be a stay-at-home mom, but a work-from-home mom where I can run to the garage and start something on the laser and then come back in and grab a you know, handful of goldfish and like go back <laughs> out or do a, a, you know, a pickup or stop and then go volunteer in the kindergarten classroom. Like that is like what like sets my heart on fire is the ability to just be present. And this, that's like one of the greatest blessings that's come out of this is just the ability to be present, you know? So yeah. And then also run out and keep working. (laughs) (laughs) Always nonstop. You have a full uh, 24, seven, 365 job. Yes. And now you've got Buffalo plaid going. So, uh, keep the timeline going. So we are in 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, sounds like February, March, we're like, double downing on this, like these gifts, right? So the first, the, these signs are sound beautiful, by the way. I actually have all the different things you've done. I've actually haven't crossed one of those yet. That sounds incredible though. Um, like where, where's the growth? Like, how do you go from just doing that? Like, are you getting pulled in different directions? Did you like, or did you want to just add more to the repertoire of like what you can offer? How did that come about? Yeah, a little bit of both. So I've always kind of like knew that I wanted to do more than just making signs. Like making signs is enjoyable for me. It's fun. Now we're able to like laser engrave signs, do, you know, like people's pictures engraved, which is amazing. Um, but I I just, in, as someone that's pulled in like a million different directions, I really just wanted to be more like efficient with my time and still be able to offer a quality. Like I am quality over quantity every day. Okay. So if it comes down to like me taking 10 orders and being able to do them okay versus taking three and being able to just absolutely rock it, I'll pick three every time. Hmm. Um, that's what's important, right? And I think that um, in those next couple of years, um, you know, you and I were talking previously, we were able to partner with the shipping point out of Gurney ah, yes, and yes, yes. having our products in their store. And, um, so Jim LaMonaco owns it. Lauren, um, is just like the sweetest human under the sun. And, um, I, I think so highly of them and they thought to approach me and say, Hey, we want to have like this small local artisan situation within the store. We would love to have your stuff in here. And so there was a little bit that kind of was like the foundation for our brand recognition because people were still having to go in and print and ship and do all those things right in the hub of Gurney, right? They're right Mm -hmm. there um, in the parking lot of the Home Depot there. And um, people started seeing like Buffalo Plaid, Buffalo Plaid, and then they would look us up online or we would get a referral. And honestly, like the greatest um, compliment to me is someone mentioning my name in a room that I'm not in, you know, and that is just like, if I'm standing in front of you, you feel more inclined to be like, oh, well, Sarah does that, right? Um, But if you're saying it behind my back and I'm not there and I wouldn't know one way or the other, and someone comes to me and says, I got, you came highly recommended, um, it's truly the greatest honor. And it's not something that like I take for granted ever. Um, but I really think just the idea of like people sharing what we do, um, word of mouth, social media, you know, I could be a million times better on social media, (laughs) but I only have so many hours in the day. Right. But that's a whole job in itself. It is. It really is. Um, but so in those next couple of years, we kind of just started making people familiar with us and putting out a quality product that people wanted in their homes or thought of us when they wanted a gift or something shipped or whatever, um, like a gift shipped, I should say. That's I'm not the shipping point. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when they needed something, I wanted them to think of us. And that kind of happened organically. I, I don't want to say that I did anything special because I, I truly don't think that I did other than to offer quality products that be available to my customers and to build relationships with them. That's like the bottom I mean, of huge. it all. I mean, I mean, you act like that's nothing. I mean, that's in, in it's, we were talking about it earlier. It's not, you went about a thousand items off Timu and like, yeah. just, you know, sell them up for a few yeah. bucks more. Yeah. Um, you know, try to get into a couple specifics, like what, you know, you, you're building these relationships, you're trying, you know, what, what was that relationship being built on? I mean, were you talking to them with these at fairs or fests or like, where, how were you meeting these people and how were you building those relationships? Yeah. So a lot of it is just, um, like the relationship building is in them reaching out and saying like, Hey, I need X, Y, Z. Um, kind of like when someone gives me a free reign on their living room wall, right? Um, it, they come to me and they say like, I need this or, here, they give me the specifics of why they're buying a, a certain gift, right? Like 
um, loss or a promotion or, you know, a new pet in the family and you are building relationships with them in, it's in those small moments of like, here's what's going on in my life and here's whatever. And I can either relate or I can't and either yeah. way it's okay. Right. But like it's, it's humanizing your interaction with them and you don't get that from box stores, right? God, no. You only get that from those people who have been in your shoes or haven't, but can sympathize with you. And, um, so really like the relationship building is just in who you are and just treating someone being a good human. Right. Yeah. I can't tell you. I mean, I'm, I think at this point, maybe 15 interviews deep on this. And I think 14 out of 15 of them have said it's the relationship with the people that has gotten them where they got. You yeah. Know? It's like, um, I mean, at the end of the day, we're the consumer, right? So one, you want to understand us. We want to understand you. And I think what is so far, well, I'm going to hope, uh, make this podcast successful is people want the story. Mm -hmm. They want to know the person behind the scenes. They want to know who you are, right? Totally. Yeah. Um, and you know, the big box stores, you know, we have this kind of like chip in our shoulder, a little cynical to like the Amazons and the home depots. And it's like, there's a convenience factor at the end of the day that they win with. But at the end of the day, I hate shopping <laughs> in a big box store if I yeah. have to. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, we now we're talking about robots and AI and it's like, oh, great. Let's dehumanize us stuff, everything even more. Yeah. Um, and funny enough, so my day job, I'm in HR in this shape, way, one way, shape or form. I'm recruiting. But like, I'm pushing the opposite. I'm like, we are taking so much human out of it that like, let's be different yeah. <laughs> by putting the human, the humility of it all back into our, our recruiting process, our hiring process, our training process mm -hmm. versus here's a video, go watch, Here, you know, like, and like trying to automate, my God, like get me off the word automate. Anyway. <laughs> I am about to get very soapboxy. So uh, we're here to talk about you and not my <laughs> frustrations. Um, so far, it sounds like you've had, I mean, just some great bootstrap growth. But obviously, along the way, we hit hurdles and obstacles. Like, what was an early on challenge? And it was like, maybe I'm not going to do this anymore. Or like, I well, that, wasn't planning that this damn thing. sign in my garage uh, was a good starting point. <laughs> we uh, um, no so. I think that, I mean, so any business as you're starting off is going to be hard. I felt like I had it a little bit harder because in my mind when I'm starting a business and I'm leaving this secure nine to five, um, that I am going to just like have all of this time to do these things and, um, and it's going to be easy because I can go out and meet people and I can do this and I can do that and I can, you know, shine my face in front of someone and say like, hey, this is who I am. This is what we do. I would love to work with you. Or if you need something, please reach out, whatever. And I didn't get that. I didn't have that. Right. So we really, because I, and I knew a life before, right? Because I started like a year prior really of like really sh like having relationships and seeing people and being able to be in front of their face. And then I had to completely shift that when I was planning on using nine to five to do that, right. right? And so that was really tough initially was just kind of trying to figure out how am I going to build a business when I am like can barely leave the house? I wasn't even sure that I'd go pick up wood, right? right? Because it's, it's like... like we could go anywhere. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Those first, what, four or five months, everything was just yes. totally locked down. Yeah. yeah. So my husband owns a, um, a baseball facility here in Grays Lake. And, um, what's the he, name of it? Give it a shout Prime out. Prime Athletics. All right. Prime Athletics. Very um, cool. And so he's been in business for eight years now. Right. But in four of those months of COVID, he was home with me and I'm like, and didn't look, kill each other. And we didn't kill each other. <laughs> and I was so thankful that I, I just, again, it's like God's timing, right. That I was in this really like thick, murky place where I'm like, what am I going to do? How am I going to make this work? And then I had my absolute best friend by my side every single day every hour of every day, <laughs> um, helping me. And he was out there cutting wood with me and like, does this look good? Do I do this? Do I do that? And he was there around the clock. I literally had access to him where he wasn't leaving to go to the building or yeah. a game or whatever. And so, um, any of those challenges, I was at least able to like, look to him for advice or just like, he's a the calm, board. the yeah, calm yeah. to my storm always. Like, you ask anybody, everybody knows like John is just like even, you know, very chill. And then it's like Sarah's like, wow, the house is on fire, right? And it's really not that but serious, it's not. but it's not. Um, and so I think I don't even know that I'm answering your question, but like I, you know, when I when I think about um just some of the things that we've struggled with, it was that that first initial. And then always just 
you know, naturally, and I think this is something that we're probably going to end up talking about, but like naturally, it's really easy to go out and look at what everybody else is doing, mm-hmm. right? And I was like my own worst enemy in that regard where I, I really just had to start living from a place of like comparison is the thief of joy. I had to yes, remind myself of that 100%. because now, you know, post COVID, everybody owns a laser, oddly yeah. enough. I yeah. mean, like, you might own one I, too. I, I, I don't know. I don't own one. Yeah, I, I, yeah the serial hobbyist in me. It yeah. just, you know, so it's like, it's hard to not like be in a community group and see there's someone else who's doing something similar to me. I just have to remind myself to like put my blinders on and stay focused because this is my dream and it has nothing to do with anybody. Like what somebody else is doing is none of my business. Right. Right. And so I think that that's one of the things that I really had to kind of like overcome and like work myself through is like what's going on over there is not my business. And, um, so I really just kind of had to like remind myself that I'm doing this because I love it and I'm passionate about it and that I do it really well. And yeah. that's something that like I I knew I had to I had to be sure of. And so it might sound like a little cocky, but like I do what I do well and I'm proud of that. And um I just need to keep pursuing and keep looking for new ways to grow because in a business like that, you could absolutely grow stagnant. It can happen in any business, you know? Mm-hmm. And so constantly looking for like What's the next thing I want to do? Get a bigger laser, engrave cups. Oh, we're going to right? talk about that. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so you know, it's it's there's there's always been challenges, but like that those first initial months was it was tough. Actually, that first initial year was tough. And as things kind of started to pull out a little bit, and we were getting a little bit back to normal, um, it it felt a little less hard. Um, and it gave me more room to be creative and think of new ways to invent myself, you know? So did I get it? Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think you set me up kind of here for a nice, you know, what I wanted to talk about next was to your point, I think one in three people I know have a laser engraver now of some shape Stop or a cricket. Oh or yeah. A, the cricket is like, that was my first tool. Or, yeah. Like. <laughs> Or something along those lines, right? Yeah. You know, or I, I feel like I know like 10 people that are in the Tumblr industry mm-hmm. or um, something along those lines. So how, to me as a consumer, how are you differentiating yourself? Like what, what would I look at, let's say your website versus Joe Schmo's website? Like what's the draw? Why, why do I want to work with you or your products or what you're offering? Yeah. So I think, um, again, we go back to this concept of like relationship building. And I I feel like when I meet someone like you came over to my house to pick up your sign, I was like in the garage with my kid, right? Max and I are out there. And I think I was cleaning the garage when you came by. Yeah. For getting getting, the the big laser. Yeah. Waiting for the big laser to come. And, um, so, you know, I think that like once I, sit down and have a conversation or get to know someone um, and and you really establish that trust with them, it doesn't really, they're not going to go looking somewhere else. And then once they get one of my products, they're like, wow, okay, That's this, true, is, this is where <laughs> yes. I want to go. Like, I don't need to look for another sign girl. I don't need to look for, you know, another Tumblr person because then you get our product and it speaks for itself. And that's always been a goal for me. Like, I don't want to give someone something that I wouldn't, proudly gift to like my very best friend or have in my own house. And so, um, you know, there's been a lot of like challenges in figuring out, maybe this goes back to the last question and figuring out how to do things because you can buy a laser or a cricket or whatever, mm-hmm. but if you don't know what you're doing, oh then, God, yes. you know, yeah. like that. I had a cricket. I know how, See, how hard that shit is. Yeah, like, it's yeah. tough. Yeah. You're just like, okay, which way does the paper go down? You know, like, am I feeding the 12 inch mat or the 24? The, the like razor or the blades <laughs> yes. and all that. It was like, oh my God. No. Where does the pen go? Yeah, I know. I I'll know. Pay Sarah. She's it's, got it. It's Let's, tough. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. And so I think just, um, you know, uh, yes, there's a lot of people out there that do it, but I, again, I think once you get something from us, it, you, you don't have a reason to go look somewhere else. Um, I want to make sure that if it's leaving my house, it's being done the best it possibly can yeah. and that it's going to make people really happy. And then I think just my excitement after finishing something is just, it also is just for other people. They're like, Oh my gosh, she's really excited about this. And I am like almost every single thing I make. I'm like, this is so freaking cool. Did you see this? Like, look at, I made a star Wars sign last night and, or this past week. And I shared it with the customer last night 
And she's like, I'm obsessed. I'm like, no, I'm obsessed. This is so amazing. <laughs> I probably sent that picture out to like 10 friends because it was just so, so proud. Cool, yeah. I was so proud. I'm like, this is amazing. Like I made that, you know? And what I love is that now almost five years later, I still have like that spark, that joy, that happiness, that fulfillment of like, I made that. And like to be five years in and be making a lot of the same stuff over and over again or, you know, whatever. It's like the stories that are attached to the stuff that I'm making, hearing about someone pass away or they get a new dog or, you know, we just did um, a a pet portrait for um, someone's sister who was having a baby shower and she knew that that was like her first baby. So she gifted that sign to her sister. And it's like, those kinds of stories, when I am working on something, those stories are like in my mind as I'm working on it. It's not like, oh, I have to process this because it means nothing to me. Like, it genuinely means something to me when I like have that relationship and I can bring it back to what I'm working on. Mm. And it just puts that much more like love and passion into what I'm doing. Like the Star Wars baby, the shower's on May 4th. Like what? I mean, I mean, it I mean, couldn't God, be more yeah. perfect, right? Is, like they well, timed they, they, that they out. They, they absolutely. Have, right? yeah. May the 4th be, be with you? you. Yeah. yeah. Come yeah, on. Right? Well, yeah. <laughs> I can't I, do that. I don't think. I don't think my fingers go that way. I, I'm not sure. I don't even know what I'm it looks like. I'm uh, throwing Star Trek's <laughs> gang signs over here, you know, to all your Star Wars fans. Uh, but, uh, no, I have to just give a shout out to your product. So I know the first thing we did together was some of the swag for the Jeep Club. Yes. Um, I actually, I'm shocked I didn't show it to you when we walked in. Like my wife is obsessed with the sign thing you made for us. The, like the vinyl record oh, yes. with our engagement or with our wedding song yes, on it. Yes, wrapped around it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And the intention to detail. Actually, I showed up the first time to go pick it up. And there was like the tiniest, tiniest little thing wrong with it. I didn't even notice it. And you're like, no, nope, I'm redoing the whole thing. Nope. Come back in next. Yep. Come back tomorrow. And Bye. Like, See you nope, later. Nah. Yep. Mm-mm. And <laughs> as tiny and as small as that was, I mean. It was that, the date, wasn't it? Yeah. It was like uh, I transposed the numbers or something, something right, yeah. in the wedding date. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm like, at least I knew it was wrong or whatever. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yeah, you saved yourself there. Yeah. Like, oh, if I, you brought that home, Jackie would not have been happy. <laughs> uh, but I think that just goes to shout. I mean, that would, you know, I order it from, you know, some basic thing online, gets shipped to me, too bad, your problem. You know, it's a custom Should have checked it yeah, or what whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you're SOL, right? Because... Um, but again, that's why podcast shop small, shop local. I mean, obviously we're supporting a business, but we're supporting families, yes, right? And yeah. that's what hits home for me. Um, so we're five years in with Buffalo plaid now, give or take, right? Mm-hmm. What is something you would have done differently? What would I have we done? We all have 2020 hindsight. Oh yeah. 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 Um, I think probably, The biggest thing for me was that there was almost a mystery behind Buffalo Plaid. And one of the things now that like I'm so proud of is like that we have that we're a family business. And you'll hear me talk about us and we, because when I talk about the business, I'm talking about like John and I, because it's a team effort, right? Like I cannot do this without him. And I know that. And and he supports me in ways that like I could never even imagine. We were had a conversation about this. Um, a couple days ago and there's just, he's always, he's just been a constant for me and just reeling me back in and, and letting me, you know, being a soundboard for me. And I think that like, initially there was like a mystery of like, what is Buffalo Plaid Studios? Who is it? What is, and then, you know, people would whisper like, oh, Sarah, Sarah owns this, or like, that's the one who owns Buffalo Plaid or whatever. And I think that I probably would have just been Um, more open about the fact that it was like my venture and what I was doing and that like it was like I'm the heartbeat behind Buffalo Plaid but I'm also the face like Mm -hmm. I am a walking billboard for what I do you're the reason we're buying into it yeah yeah and it's for it's for me it's to know that like when you support this business you're supporting my family that like you know you've seen those those memes that are like when you by small, a little person does a dance. But that's like yeah, a true story 100%. because without having that, like we wouldn't go to TJ Maxx and get toys when, you know, we behave ourselves. We'd have less goldfish. Around, <laughs> We'd you know? have less goldfish. Um, but, you know, it's it's paying for soccer and t-ball. And, uh, you know, we just got to take the kids to Walt Disney World in February. And that was really awesome. It was a great experience. But it's like without having – you couldn't pay me to believe that five years ago that we would have, I would have been able to stay home with my kids, not in the mental space that I was at, or just in my, in my current, 
um, belief in my own abilities that like I was going to be able to stay home with my kids and still work a job that is I'm so passionate about. Yeah. Um, so I think that probably making a, a better connection between like what you're when you're buying and what you're supporting, because I truly think that every small business has that story. And that's one of the things I, I love most about what you're doing is that I've always thought one day I'll share my story. One day someone will know where this all started. And then there you are in my DMs. And I'm like, <laughs> absolutely, sign me up. When Let's are we doing go. it? Let's go. And so um, I think probably just um, not, I don't want to say it was like um, being embarrassed because I was never embarrassed, but more of like, why am I hiding behind this company name when, when really every relationship I'm building, it's all me. Right. Yeah. And like, I was able to give them something that they can't get again at like a box store. Yep. And so, um, yeah, I think that like, that's probably one of the biggest things, um, that, and then just keeping my head down. Right. And, and not being focused about what somebody else huge. is yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. doing what somebody else is doing, or, um, even maybe another thing I would say is probably sharing. So like just sharing what I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know, and now it's tough because like at the beginning, social media was not, I mean, social Facebook has always been big and Instagram was kind of there. Right. Mm. Um, but then like the reels and TikTok and all those things, you didn't really, those weren't really like things that you were thinking I'm going to show how I'm working. Yeah. I think probably the most popular videos on my Instagram are ones where I'm showing people what BTS. I'm doing yep. and I'm, and it's just like, if I had been, um, more willing, like, like longer table, shorter fence, right. Mm. To share, what it is that I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And and now there's a, a, you know, probably about four or five laser communities that I'm in, like through social media. And if somebody needs a problem or needs help or whatever, I'm like, hey, call me, FaceTime me. I will message strangers online and say like, hey, I saw you were struggling with XYZ. I've been there. Just if you want to FaceTime me and that's not weird for you, I will walk you through it. Right. Yeah. And like, I don't, I think when you and I had talked about the sign was my laser, did it break? The first one had it broken yet? No, it hadn't. No. Okay, so it must have been shortly after that that like this red voltage, high voltage wire went out, right? And so I was out of commission, oh, no. and I was like searching like at the ends of the earth to find a solution, or do I have to buy buy a whole new one? Well, it turned out in that time I ended up buying the new one anyways, and fixing the old one. But having been through that experience and feeling like I was at the very bottom pit, lowest low, my business is done. I'm over with, right? Not that I couldn't still like make regular signs like I started, <laughs> but, um, feeling that way. And then, uh, there was probably a handful of people who went through the exact same thing that I was able. There was a woman who lived in New Jersey and, um, she's said, Oh, Sarah, you are an angel and I love you. And I talked to her and her brother-in-law for hours on Facebook oh to God. help her do the exact same thing, the same fix that I had to do for myself. And um, I think if I had just been like more transparent in the beginning and feeling less like, oh, they're competition, they're not competition. They're truly not. Nope. Like, I think when you're secure in what you're doing in your business, you don't have to worry about someone being better than you. Like I have never always under be someone better than you. Yeah. You yeah. got to get past that. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And I've never underestimated my ability to hustle, you know, like kids go to bed. It's eight 30, seven 30, nine 30. I'm going to go back out to the garage and I'm going to keep working because there's things to be done. Yeah. You know, like I said, like when I left my nine to five, that those were like guaranteed times. I knew when I was going to be working and now it's like, I can work from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. if my body wakes me to. up then, yeah, you know, right. and it's happened last week, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. and my day was over, right? Um, it sucked. <laughs> I <laughs> was a little tired. Nice. Yeah, just, yeah, you can't, it, but you can get up and work, right? And so I never underestimate my ability to just work hard to get things done. And so, um, yeah, I, shorter fence, longer table. Yeah, I... I know on this podcast, um, I've talked about it a couple times. So I work with a lot of companies and how companies that struggle in the marketing area, let's say, you know, they're, they know their product in and out. They, you know, they know their business, their industry, but they don't know how to get it in front of people. Mm -hmm. And you hit the nail on the head on the biggest topic we always talk about is you are the brand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we want to know, like I, I worked with this client and they had the most beautiful product in the world and they photographed it like made I like I wish I could photograph that well but 
they weren't getting any buy-in. They weren't no one no they weren't getting the engagement they wanted. They weren't getting the sales they wanted. I'm like, they want to know about you. Mm-hmm. They want to see people had such a different appreciation when they see how much work goes into some of these things. And I can't um, one of the things I love to do is watch some of these artists that uh, post their TikToks or go live and like the insane skill it takes to do some of these things. And it's like, now I want to buy it because I understand what I'm looking at now. It's not, you know, when we like, I walk into TJ Maxx and I see a, a print, you know, that some company is printing thousands of copies of this. Sure. It's like, all right, uh, cool painting. But when I see over here, Joe Schmo, he's painting it, who he is, why he's doing it and the hours it went into doing it. Mm-hmm. There is like, for me, I'm not hanging it to tell you the story i now see there and i know the story yeah and that's that's the part that consumers want now Mm -hmm. i mean and i don't blame them like because we lost touch of that so much Mm -hmm. and there's they're just hungry for it yeah i have a love-hate relationship with social media we all do in some way shape or form yeah but i think that is one of the best things that's ever happened for a business that um and i think one of my other podcasts we talked about uh it's, it's a way to free advertise for businesses and they're not utilizing it. Right. You know, and it's like, take advantage of it. You know what this cost 20 years ago to get this kind of marketing? You would never be able to. You were hustling the local farmer's market and that's the best you ever got yes. because there was no other way to reach. Now the world's literally your reach. Yes. Like and on your phone. On right? your phone. At your all, fingertips. That's it. That's literally, all you need. Yeah. And it's free. 100% yeah. free to touch the entire world with whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. And, um... I like that, you know, longer table, shorter fence. Mm -hmm. I think that is such a great way to put it because invite them in, let them into what, you know, let them in on the struggles. Like there's a lot of buy-in on that of just like, nothing's perfect. It's impossible. So these like perfect stories, it's like, that's bullshit. Yeah. Anybody who's ever touched any kind of business knows. Knows that's that's not true. That's a bunch of crap. Yeah, 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 yeah. uh, Great, great point. And I think that's huge for our listeners, whether you're a consumer or Maybe you're going to start your own venture. Like, it's okay. You are the face yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Let them see your face and then just be willing to, like, take advice from other people. Like, you don't have to know it all. And I just, I never knew it all. I still don't know it all. There's still things I'm learning, <laughs> right? And that's, like, the beautiful thing about, like, growing is that you never are truly done. Yeah. Like, and if you are, then then you're done. Then you're done. Then you're yeah, done. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, so I, I would absolutely just, like echo that like make sure that you're willing to like share what you're doing and how you're doing and if you fail that's okay too um and to just share that i will go home and post a picture of that god awful sign that i made and but that's got to be such a motivational piece for you it really is it is right in front of my face every single day i have like the workbench now you saw it in the garage and it sits right there in front of me so that i can look at it and just remember that like when i'm frustrated with something or i can't figure it out or i haven't dialed in the settings that like I will figure it out mm-hmm. that there's oh, so I wanted to tell you about this and I think we'll probably talk about it, but there was during the time that I was like transitioning from like doing the therapy and, and then leaving work and whatever, I read this book called, um, everything is figure outable by Marie Forleo. Have Everything's you read it? Figure outable. Everything is figure outable. Okay, cool. You have to read it. I did. Right. Okay. okay. Yes. So like my mantra is everything is figure outable. That is just, I have to remind that, like keep that in like fresh in my brain of like, if I'm stuck or I can't figure something out and not even just with my business, but in life in general, everything is figure outable. And so it's this concept that like, you will figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like it might not be today. It might not be tomorrow or in the next month. If you keep working at it, you're going to figure it out. So it's like, I just left this job. I don't have any income. The world I, just shut the world down. Just shut down. I, everything is figure outable. And so I just kept reminding myself of that. That book is really wonderful. And I've suggested it to a lot of small business owners to read it because it's not just good for your business. It's good for your life. Mm-hmm. And it's just a good reminder that you will figure it out, that you're not stuck. You know, you might feel that way for the moment, but that you it will pass and you're going to figure out how you're going to get over whatever this hump is right because it's just a hump yeah 100%. so that's you have to read that I'm book 100% it's on audible to too so if you're like more of a listening i don't really like to read to be honest I don't with you like to read so i'm like audible is my jam <laughs> so i like the audible part but i like read along with it okay the audible part keeps you're like my read brain to me <laughs> well it keeps my brain like because i'll read something in the book and it'll make me think of something else oh for like, sure in my life that i'm dealing with and then all of a sudden like my eyes are reading three pages in 
but like I just thought you about were this over like, here. Like, like yeah. I'm like, oh, but so the audio helps me just like stay focused. Yes. So I like to like do it concurrently. The only part I hate is sometimes the books and the audio they're close but off enough where it's just like oh, wait that's wait, not the uh, word wait, go wait, back yeah, fix yeah. it <laughs> fix it make like, it right yeah yeah uh, so we you mentioned many many times your husband has been a huge huge supporter yeah, right yeah i love him he's a, he's a good man uh, that's good i'm glad cuz he's your husband <laughs> i'll keep him <laughs> <laughs> for now we'll see no no um has there been somebody else that either has been a great mentor or at least maybe given you like a piece of advice that was game changing for you that that just like really stuck with you early on? Um, you know, I think it's hard to really like pinpoint one person. I there's been so many people who have like supported me along the way and and have just like in moments where I do feel like giving up, uh, there would truly be too many people to list. John is just like my constant in that, like, you know, we're together a lot because he owns his own business and his hours are later. We, uh, it's very like not normal that we get to spend almost every morning together and then still see each other at night, right? Where yeah. he's running his own business. And so, um, I really think that like, if I have to pick one person, I would pick him hands down. Like, of course, there's other people like the people at the shipping point, right? Lauren and Jim, who've been, who have given me these opportunities or um, like Trish from Treat Diva, right? She's Another, so just the sweetest, um, Brie from the Champ Room. Like oh, yeah. all of these, right? These small business owners that are like, they know your struggle. And I think as a fellow small business owner, only you can truly appreciate what it looks like when you're in a bad way, mm -hmm. you know, to just be like, keep going, or we're going to figure it out or to show you grace. If you do something wrong, like yeah. a date, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that, um, I, I truly think that there's just been so many people in so many aspects of my life that have, um, just continued to just push me forward and to remind me, even like preparing for coming here, we, our, our two besties live a couple doors down and they're like, you're going to do great. It's going to be fine. Don't be nervous. You're amazing. Everyone loves you. And I'm just like, Oh, stop, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no, a little more. You know, keep like a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, it, it really does like, I think making something like this work and, and being able to even just like in raising our kids, right? Like John will come home after working and he just picks up where, uh, where I left off so that I can seamlessly, tra seamlessly transition into like going to get my work done. And, um, you know, my in-laws are around and they're wonderful and, and like, it takes a lot to make something like this, like function, you know? And so having them, here and and having him there willing to just i mean he's a, an incredible husband he's really pushed me so far and to do things that like i didn't want to do you know he's like but you got this like i what if you did this oh i know you can do it or like engrave on a color of leather that i didn't want to do you know like he's like you can <laughs> do, do it. it just yeah, do it yeah, yeah like stop talking about it um yeah so i i would say uh, i mean i think that's probably the the then my number one, like my, my a one is, yeah. is him. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we kind of almost went down this rabbit hole. Um, obviously at least from my perspective, the, the engraving, the cr cricket scene has changed a lot over yeah. the last few years. It's gotten expensive <laughs> and expensive. Um, you know, are there any new trends you see coming and are you like changing, adapting anything or, have you done anything that like now there are a thousand laser engravers out there like to kind of stay relevant? You know what? Talk to me about trends. Like, yeah. So picking up what I'm putting down. I'm, I'm, I'm picking it, it up. Oh, okay, I'm picking okay. it up. I know. I know. If we were talking about photography, you would be like on it, but oh, I God, know you're, yeah, okay. you're weaving it into the laser. And, yeah. um, I, truthfully, I don't really pay attention to the trends because okay. I do what, um, our customers come to us and ask us to do, or I do what I want to do. And <laughs> that's uh, a nice business. Yeah. Model. I'm just going like, to do whatever I want to do, whatever do, I wanna do and yeah, it's right? fine. Um, you know, I see the things that other people are making and mm -hmm. to a certain extent, it can look almost cookie cutter, right? Well, that like, like uh, this little, yeah, like, or yeah, like yeah. this business owner's offering it, but so are seven other ones. And so the exact and same, so thing. Exact same okay. thing. So it's yeah. like almost to step outside of a trend 
to try to find something else that people are, that's going to be appealing to my customers um, or something that I would just want, right? Like our customers never came to us and said like, can you do tumblers? Can you engrave this? Can you whatever uh, on like a cup or a glass? And, um, and we never, we never had that, but it's something that I wanted to do. It's something that I thought would add value to our business, to our customers' lives that like, they could have something that says like soccer mom or whatever, right? <laughs> like whatever they want or like other, we talked earlier about like having other businesses around where I could partner with them to offer something locally, right? Yeah. Cause you can go to anything on any store online and have them make, you know, tumblers with your logo on it. But then what about if you are getting a better price and you're shopping small with like a, someone local in your area? Yeah. Right. Um, and so I think that, um, yeah, probably that's like. I mean, I think that right there. I mean, I think going against the trends is almost yeah. your trend. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm super all trendy. Doing this? Yeah, we're gonna go over <laughs> here. I'm gonna set the trend. You know? Yeah, like, I'm just gonna start a new. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and I and I re- appreciate that because it's like, um, we were kind of talking about this before, and I didn't want to go down this hole, but like, we I go to a lot of these different like uh, pop up small business craft fair type mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And it's like the more and more I go to them, I feel like I, I can't tell the difference. It all uh, looks the they, same. They, and like I'm right? looking at 10 booths and they're all like, you're all offering basically the same thing in some way, shape, or form. And mm-hmm. don't be wrong, there's a couple of businesses that are just outshining yes. other, a lot of other people. Sure. But like it gets so repetitive. Yeah. And it's just like, great, cool, thank you. Like, but moving on. And then your side of it is like I love the custom piece to it all, like mm-hmm. the stuff I've done with you and like some of the other things I've seen. So going against the grain. Got it. That's your that's your that's your <laughs> that's answer. My, Which it, it, it works. <laughs> if it works, that hey, well, you know. You know, and so it's so interesting because like a lot of people when they come to us, it is because they want something custom. And that is was one of my goals always was to be able to take something that you can find stock, right? Mm-hmm. That it's like, oh, I could run to the store and get that and maybe add a date on it or, uh, you know, uh, your, a family name or like for a baby, like I, I can't tell you the number of baby names that I knew before anybody yeah. else. And I had to keep it a secret <laughs> and I did, but I got to work on something special. Right. Yeah. And so, um, working with, um, moms, like new moms too, that are like, I'm going to tell you this name, but you better not tell anybody. And you can't post a picture till after the baby's born. And I'm just like, you got it. You're it's welcome. cool. I'm, I'm in the circle. Like like, I made yeah, it. It's like yeah. me, you, and the dad were the ones who know like the baby's name, you know, like Niven and grandma is amazing. Um, but so, yeah, it's just being able to customize things is so, um, it's, it's a huge aspect of what we do. Like, yes, I can make you a sign that says gather if that's what you want. Right. And there's nothing against <laughs> sure that, nothing against that, know. but yeah. like, um, you know, it's, it's the, the ability to take something and, and personalize it and make it yours because yeah. when you can add your own spin or your own name or your family name or your kids names, um, a piece for like a grandmother, that's like, you know, the year that she became a grandma and what, I, like, those are all super, super important. And I'm like a really sentimental person. Like I think if you have, like I'm, I can be quite emotional. I'm really surprised no I didn't start crying when I started talking about my mom. I was fully expecting to, but I kept it together. Um, but so, you know, I am a very sentimental person. So when I get the opportunity to work with someone on something that's sentimental, um, it's, I feel honored. And I think that that's like such a good way to put when someone comes to me and says like, I want you to make whatever it's a choice always, right? They could pick me or they could pick 10 other people that have a laser in the neighborhood. Right. Mm -hmm. But they chose me. And so like, that's never lost on me ever. I love that. Like I, I, I cherish the fact that like, they chose me because they could have chosen someone else. Yep. And when they come back, it's even better. You know, oh, it's like, customers 10 yes, times better. Cause yeah. then it's like, then you felt like I did it right. Yeah. It's like, or this concept of like mentioning you to someone when you weren't even there, yeah. you know, it's like, that's just, oh, is like, you from, you know, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, <sighs> the, re- the referral that I think that one always hits me the best is yeah. like, like, or a referral from somebody who wasn't like, like I do a lot of work for a lot of people I've known a long time, but then like, maybe I'll pick up a random, order or whatever or photography thing and I'll do it 
and then they refer somebody. Mm-hmm. And it was like, so there's not even a deeply, deeply rooted relationship there. This is like somebody we've worked one off. I thought it went fine, over and done. Easy. Or you left and had total social anxiety and you're oh, like, oh, like, they hate they, me. Yep, yeah, they absolutely like, hate oh me. God, I'm never going to hear from them again. Their photos <laughs> didn't really work out. Oh my God, they, we barely talked. Like, never going to hear from them again. And then I got three referrals from them. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah you're like, well, okay, I read that wrong. Okay. I read that wrong. Okay. Um, I thought I knew what I could read a room, <laughs> but I guess not. Uh, what um, do we say? What are your three or four favorite things to make? Obviously, we talked about a lot about signs, but el- what other, like, what do you like to make? Oh, gosh. What a question. Yeah. Um, or what's some popular things that you do? So I love making cups. I'm obsessed with it now. I feel like I'm like, oh, just like give me. It, no, so no, like, like, like tumblers. tumblers like, 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 and yeah, then and there's and like such a science like behind it because you like no cup is like the where the wrap is exactly the, the same and whatever. Be like crazy yeah, but it's too. so fun. So like you can literally, and that's what took me the longest in learning how to do this was like figuring out how to get the laser to like line. You have to remove a cone and a, this autofocus pin and like it's a whole thing, right? And so science getting it like getting through to that, removing mm-hmm. the handles, right? Right? Like you have to take the handle off really? in order. Like, see, yep. So I have screws under there. Oh see that? God. Yep. Uh, well, you don't have, I you know, don't have a handle. I, I, I he doesn't have a handle. Model, like, had a handle and it definitely doesn't. <laughs> doesn't have a handle. But yeah. if it did, we would have to take them <laughs> off. Um, but so I think there's like this newfound excitement. And so when I introduce new things into my business, it also gives me like, um, it kind of renews my spirit, right? Of like, oh my God, I'm so excited to go in the garage and like make this. And it's going to be so fun and amazing and beautiful. And so that's like my new love currently. Okay. Um, I love making memorial pieces again, near and dear to my heart. Heart. I just don't think that there's anything that touches my heart more than doing those pieces. And it could be for a pet who's passed mm-hmm. away. Um, my sister actually, I probably cause she knew I would never do this. She got me a watercolor painting of like our dog Cody who passed away. And it was like one of my most cherished gifts because, and I didn't make it right. Somebody she paid someone to make it probably off of Etsy, which is great. Small business. Yeah. Um, but it was like one of my most cherished, cherished pieces. And so now we have the ability to laser engrave these photos of dogs. And, um, for people who either like they get a new dog or they're just obsessed with their dog and like somebody else has a different pet than a dog. Can they do it? Yeah, for oh, sure. Okay. I've done, I mean, it's just... weird. I've done cats and like the amount of hair, like dogs have a lot of hair. Okay. Yeah. But like when you're talking about engraving the strands of like hair on a cat, it's like, it's crazy. I don't even know how we're having this conversation <laughs> right now, <laughs> but I've done cats. I've not, I've only done dog and cats now. Okay. Like, like, so my parrot that I don't have, you know, maybe if you had that parrot and you're like, Hey, or you grab one off of Google and then text me and tell me you got a parrot I'm and you want like me to a really obscure animal and tell you it was like a pet I lost. As a yeah. Child, and I know, need like, you to engrave me a photo. Goat, you know, like, <laughs> Grew up with a billy goat. And- oh, I'm sorry. The hair is too fine for me to do a billy goat. <laughs> um, I think just any of those, I, I really don't know that there's like necessarily like favorite pieces. I think anything that like is um, like memorializing, yes, is is important. The cups is so fun for me. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I necessarily have favorites. I really do truly enjoy everything that I make. And, um, even more so when I know the story behind why I'm making it, you know, and you can't always pull that out of people. No. So you kind of either have to like use your imagination or be willing to just like make it as if you're making it for yourself. Right. Cause some people are just as many, make up your own story. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Or I could just make up my own story about your billy goat. Um, (laughs) you know, it's like for another podcast, Yeah, for another one. Um, and so, you know, yeah, it's just, I think that, you know, you also have to be willing to like make your own connection to what they're asking you to make, um, in order to be able to put your heart into why you're making it, you know? And that's really like the biggest thing when I say like the heartbeat behind Buffalo plaid, I've said it, it's on my website when I say like, this is who I am. And I truly mean that because like my heart goes into the things that I make. And that is like so important. That has come across so well today. And I think by Thank the way, you. you've crushed this interview. So I'm uh, sweating. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 um, what I want to do. So we, if you guys have been following my podcast for a while, like the easiest and the free way to support small business, like comment, share, engage with the small business, let other people find us. Um, but if you want to take it a step further and let's say we wanted to buy something personalized from Buffalo plaid, how do we find you? Yeah. So I am on, we have a website and oh, yeah. so our no, website, whoa, whoa, we, got <laughs> we have a website. Breaking news. 
All right, what's what's the web address? You didn't know I had a of website? I oh, I was like, I mean, what the heck? I thought I, the sarcasm wasn't thick enough on no, that No, it wasn't oh, thick bad. enough. My Got bad. lost. Sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, buffaloapplaidstudios.com is the website. And um, what's really nice is like one of the things we did at the beginning of the year was everything you'd go to our website and you'd see everything on a list. And now we have just like some highlighted items that are like more like they're featured items. And then everything is broken down by categories. Okay. So if you're searching so for something for like a hundred items, correct, like before, which okay, like yeah. I was doing before I even, I was doing them for it's terrible. Um, and so, you know, again, sent that out to some friends, like, does this make more sense? Like, yeah, girl, you should have done that like four years ago, you know? <laughs> Um, but so, yeah, so you can go and shop by your category. So like pets, memorial, um, family, baby, uh, any of those things, gifts for her, gifts for him. Like you can find them all on there online. Um, and then we're on Facebook and you can just find us Buffalo Plaid Studios. You search, you will not find a plaid Buffalo logo. It's just <laughs> black and white. She's real cute. You, I, I'm, I, we'll do it offline, but you got to show me this Buffalo logo or it's, something. It's, it's like, so uh, awful. Yeah. yeah you're going to laugh uh, so hard at me. I mean, it's what was bad it was really bad but you know what <laughs> growth it's yeah, fine it's, it's okay we, we, that's good that you recognize right yeah, yeah. I was eventually yeah. and again why didn't anybody tell me you know like girl you're going with the full-on plaid okay. and the buffalo all right I mean, God, if I just saw that logo, now what do I think you were selling? Like you, burger meat I don't, or You know, something? I'm not yeah, even yeah, sure. Yeah. Let me see if I can pull it up on here because now I just feel like you have to see it. I know it was on my um, on my on my Facebook page, but um, it was pretty. It was pretty bad. Flow plaid, like I would think, like some rugged Western thing or something, like a it plaided so buffalo, like clothing bad. for like you know, country clothing. I, I don't even, I'm like, w so the reason we're kind of talking about this, uh, so Sarah and I were talking, you know, we were talking about the pod, my previous podcast name, Digging In, right? Like it, it, it was miscued everybody on like what the name was this podcast was going to be. And I literally changed it like days before it launched. And, um, you know, some people are like, oh, you know, it sounds like a construction thing or digging up rocks and stones. And I was like, yeah, that's not what, what I'm doing, doing at all. all. So I literally had to scrap absolutely everything and start over days before launch. So and so here we are on Big Dreams. Oh, I told oh, you. Oh, that is it's terrible. That's interesting. It's terrible. Look yeah. at it. Oh my God! There guys, wasn't you even an S. This. I mean, it's, yeah, it is guys. true that like classic red and black plaid with a like silhouette buffalo with the BP, BP yeah. like cut through the buffalo. It's, it, it's yeah, so you've come a long way. It's I've great. Come a I love long it. Way. I love it now. See and look at how beautiful and timeless. I could that even is. see that picture see? that like on a like perfect on a shirt or like you know and, like some yeah. branding and logo work you know. That a buff, hat maybe a hat you know oh, i'm a hat guy you i do have, have a hat with hat. that patch on it actually it's my favorite hat um yes so i'm i'm very happy to see that logo go it's yeah. was time well at least you have the memories yeah <laughs> and and now it's just just like a talking point right yeah, so it's a good story to tell <laughs> you know we go laugh at ourselves when it's in the past um, Yikes. all right as so we kind of get wrapped up here one more question i want to ask before we get into the rapid fire if someone was looking to start their own business and you only give them one piece of advice, what would you give them? Do it scared. Yes. I love that. Yeah. That was actually like my biggest problem was like, not like I was scared to yeah, jump in, just do it. Just jump in you know. because you know what? Like we literally get one go around. Right. Yep. And so especially for myself, with all of the things that I was struggling with and just really trying to like find that piece of me, if I had not just taken that everything is figure outable mantra, right. And ran with it, like we're going to figure this out. Um, granted it's easier to do right. When you have someone that's is supporting you and saying like, you can do this, you can do this, you're going to figure it out. But even without that, I think just, you just have to do it yeah. and you're going to figure it out. You will. Yeah. And like you either you either start the business or you don't. Yeah. But like it's there and just talk about it. You what is it? Day it. one or one day, right? <laughs> and like oh, I like that line. Right? Like day yeah. one or one day. And like so you just have to start. And yeah. and you can be scared. That's okay. Like I remember this feeling of like almost panic, right? Of like, I'm not gonna do it. I can't do it. How am I gonna whatever? But like when you get past that and you have that like moment of just like oh my God, I actually did, did it. it. Yeah. You know, like I did it. And um, it's the greatest feeling in the world. And it'll make you want to do it all over again. You know, a new project, uh, a, maybe a different business or whatever. You know, I like have myself spread so thin sometimes, but like 
truly with this, it's like, just do it. Just do it. I'm not like, you right. know, sorry, Nike. Nike. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, this I, is not I, sponsored, this is by, not not sponsored by, by Nike. I wish, but if Nike are listening, you know. <laughs> and you need some spokeswomen and men. <laughs> um, no, do it scared and, and just do it. Like truly, because it's like, remind yourself of that one day or day one. And, and you're okay, going to find yourself okay, like, you know what? I want today to be day one because I'm worth it and I can do it and I'm capable and all of those other wonderful affirmations, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, very cool. So this has been fun. So let's jump into some rapid fire and then we'll wrap up for the day. Okay. All right. What is your favorite movie? Okay. So, oh, that's we, so we called hard. It rapid fire. I, was I know. Like, Dang. I, was like, I know. <laughs> um, it's kind of hard because like, I really love comedies in general. Like Step Brothers can't go wrong with that. I've watched it a million and one times. Just become best but as I, uh, exactly right. Um, uh, let's go to Karate in the Garage. <laughs> um, I've, I've watched it a million times and there's so many references that I make to it. Um, anything with Adam Sandler, love Adam Sandler. Um, I think the one movie that's like sticking out to me and there's just like a memory tied to it is Bridesmaids. Oh my God. So, oh, anything that Melissa McCarthy hilarious. too. I, so I had a kidney infection and I was in the hospital and my mom brought me this DVD and she's like, I rented this. You can watch it while you're here. I kid you not, no less than five nurses came in to check on me because I was crying, laughing so oh, hard. That's like, so good. that first watch is like, there's nothing like it, right? But then you can in- equally enjoy you it when you watch it over things. and over as oh, you yeah. watch it over and over, yeah. right? Um, so, Bridesmaids was just one of those movies that's like so hilarious to me and for so many different reasons. And um, yeah, it just, that one is one that like totally sticks out to me. That one and Step Brothers, but I feel like everybody love Step Brothers, right? I do not. Like, I don't no. want to be your friend if you don't love Step Brothers, but... <laughs> We're not best friends, you know? uh, Very cool. I can I can get on board with those. Okay. Uh, if you were going to get stuck on an island and you were going to only have one thing to take with you, what would you take with you? Do I have clothes? <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll assume you're clothed. Yes. Okay. I just blew my <laughs> <laughs> Um... Oh let, 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 let's just assume that. That's a great assumption. Okay, yeah. okay. It's an assumption. Okay, it's <laughs> yeah. an assumption. And you yeah. know what happens when you assume. Oh, so I'm just making sure that we got nude I got clothes island on. We are on. <laughs> and now yeah, it's right? you know, it could be a nude <laughs> island. You didn't specify. Um so <laughs> I can only bring one thing. One thing. That sounds terrible. It is. Uh do I have is there Wi Fi? <laughs> <laughs> We are on a deserted island. I oh, don't. Oh, did think, you say that part? No, okay. I, I think a deserted and island. a closed island. I mean, yeah, yeah, we need yeah, a, a little, little bit more, more specifics and here. And it's a warm island. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. We're like a, a deserted uh, Mediterranean <laughs> island that averages seventy six degrees and maybe a cup. I don't know. God. Okay. <laughs> I would say my cell phone, but that wouldn't do any good. That's so worthless. it's just like you know, yeah. it would be worth. That's why I needed to know if we had Wi-Fi. Now I know huh. I was, it's deserted. I, maybe just to drink water, so I don't have to use my hands. I don't know. <laughs> All right. What we, would you bring? I mean, I'd say like a pocket knife, like or a a fishing pole, or those are. Thing. I mean, I feel like I'm pretty resourceful. I could probably make both of those things. Well, if you I know? Had like a, a like a utility knife thing, like that's a tool. Like that's a good point. Yeah, okay. Like and then it would make I can make a lot of things. So like a cuff yeah. or a knife. I could still keep running my business actually if I had a knife with me. So <laughs> shipping might be a little difficult. Yeah, but... the cost of shipping might kill you though. <laughs> oh, oh my that's gosh. so good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to follow that right now. A cup. You're welcome. And on this nude beach, I have a cup. It's not. No. Anyway, next next rapid fire question. <laughs> um, where's your favorite place to shop in Lake County? Um, Buffalo Blood Studios. <laughs> Just kidding. The shameless plug there. Um, where is my favorite place to shop? You know what? Um, that is actually kind of tough because there's a lot of super cute little um, mom and pop shops in um, downtown Antioch, and I really love those, and in downtown Grays Lake. Like, mm-hmm. I just feel – I actually wish that there was more of those in Lake Villa. Um, they're coming around. They're coming around. They're getting there, that little plaza they're building. That's a great little new one. No. Where is that at? Um, basically Grand in – is that 83, the main, that main street? Yeah. Uh, 83. Is it, it in the strip? It's the next, it's the strip right before Grand, right next to the gas station. There's like a barber shop. Yeah, and, yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking and about. Like yeah. They, she handcrafts like towels and blankets. And really? I've like, never heard uh, of it. 
like we have a bunch of their like little uh, like kitchen towels they make and like she looms them. They're incredible. I'll have to check it out. Right down, I, the, right down the street. Literally right down and yeah, right down the street. Um, and that Oxy, uh, the Ox by the Oxmart. I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, she's not in that strip mall. It's the next one down. Oh, the that, next one. That okay, Oxmart place that, is great. My husband is obsessed with that place. I'm trying like, to get him on the podcast. It's so incredible. Yeah, he. Um, it's so good, and he actually just got some like jalapeno cheese or something from there the other day, oh, and his mouth yet. was on fire. fire. <laughs> and he loves hot, right? Like loves spicy. Uh, no, he like is like it was hot. So if you love spicy cheese, you have to go to Oxmart for sure. Um, but you're not a, you're not going to dodge the question. I still I know. I just am I like trying answer. to think of like a one specific place. Um, there's like a mercantile place in Antioch that has like a lot of really cute spots. I really, I I can't go wrong in like a little mom pop shop that has like a really eclectic feel. I don't know that there's like a specific one. Mm. Um, so indecisive. I know. I know. Well, it's just because they all have like something different to offer. I'm trying to even think if there's like something specifically in like Gray's Lake that I really enjoy. Um, like places I enjoy. There's that blush boutique mm, yeah. in Gray's Lake. That is like such a cute spot. Um, I think at this point we've plugged half of Lake County. I know. I literally <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, if it's, a, if it is like, and I'm not saying that just because this is a small business podcast, but truly those places like have my heart because I just know what goes in oh, to making course. it right. And that there's like an actual person behind. So any of those little spots, um, and in like, uh, Wakanda is starting to get some in there. Uh, yeah. Well, and so this, the thing is like, it. and there is like a, a, some sort of like a pop-up shop situation out that way. Isn't there like McHenry or, I mean, that's, it would be Maybe. a different County, but, I mean, um, we're not Lake County only, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm a, I actually just was up in Twin Lakes interviewing a great little small business. So yeah. It's, we're good. We get around. Yeah. There's a lot of little ones in Lake Geneva too. Oh, yeah. Those ones well, are like amazing. I avoid yeah. the tourist traps one though. You know, it's you like, what? Oh yeah. Oh, oh like, you're like, mm, I, yeah, I don't need a Chicago sign, but thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And if I do, I got a girl. So buzz off. <laughs> I know somebody. <laughs> Um, I don't have a specific answer for you. Just all these. There's a lot of really amazing little spaces in Lake County that they offer. Oh, you know what? Who has the best coffee? It's in Waukegan. Uh, Drip Culture. Oh, my God. I've been hearing so much about you that You have to go have a, co- a cup of coffee at I'm Drip a, Culture. I'm a coffee fiend. Yeah. So, yes. It's I've located heard of, like, inside of Gonzalez, which is like a oh, restaurant. Or, really? Yeah. So, it's a um, it's a, a supermarket, um, and they have the best flautas and the best carnitas you will ever, ever have. Oh, ooh, that's a like, high bar. I don't every know. Sunday, my family growing up, because I lived right down the street from there, born and raised in Waukegan, would um, go and get those for our Sunday breakfast. And... It is amazing. And if you get the flautas, you have to get the green sauce. It's a must. Noted. Yes. I'm look, I will... And drip and culture is inside of them, or drip culture is inside, inside of there. Gonzalez. Okay. Yep. Very yep. cool. That's, an, that's another really great space. So do I even dare ask this last question? Oh, God. Who would you be your number one recommendation we should interview? Next. Not yeah. next, but like soon. I yeah. mean, we already kind of touched base on this a little bit, but I would a thousand percent say that there are stories and um, challenges that have been overcome by um, the shipping point. I do love them so much. I figured that's where you're going to go. Yeah. 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 And I think Lauren does a lot of, um, does a lot of like the um, kind of like the, the media and their social media. And then when they, they've been on XLC before um, just kind of pubbing through the holiday shipment, you know, deadlines and stuff. And so Lauren's kind of normally the person that does that, but either Lauren or Jim to just talk about when you say like a small business and that like you walk in there and you know, like you always leave with a smile. You're always treated so kindly um, the, the friendliest staff and that they like, they truly care. And you just can't find that yeah. in a business in Gurney. That's like, you know, they whatever their volume is, they're constantly busy when I go in there, but you never find them, um, at their wits end or whatever. It's always like the friendliest face. The second you walk in, my kids are always greeted with a smile and a okay. hug. Um, and, I I truly love um, them, and I think that there are stories to be told about. Just he's been had the business. Lauren's been there for twenty years, so Jim had to have been there for twenty plus, right? Taking yeah. the, taking over the store when he was really young, and so and then to raise two kids and have a wife and like a family and this whole, whole business thing, and yeah. a and a brick and mortar, right? Which a small business that's a brick and mortar. Yeah. 
I know what that looks like just from even just dipping my toes in to think about opening yeah. a store with two young kids and he did it, you know? And so I would a thousand percent recommend them. Um, well, then I'm going to yeah. hold you, uh, make an intro, please. I sure I would, will. I, I would be, I would be happy to. Yes. Um, all right. So give one last shout out. What's the website? Okay. Buffalopodstudios.com. And we're on Facebook, Buffalo Pod Studios. And then we're also on Instagram and it's Buffalo underscore plaid underscore studios. studios. That's yeah. literally all yeah, they I had know. for me. It, you well, know, they like, don't allow space. I think it was it's probably like, the yeah. logo that made them, yeah, you know, like, like, oh, like, mm, how can really yeah, tough for her. she's going to have to jump through some hoops to put that on the Internet. <laughs> um, I will also put all this when it gets posted, guys. So don't worry. Um, Sarah, thank you so much. Thank today. you this for has having been me. So much fun. Yes, I had a blast, and I was worried for absolutely nothing. You know, Seriously, it's you were like so talking to an old friend, which yeah. I appreciate. That's I love that. really amazing. So, thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. The pleasure and the honor has been all mine, truly. So, thank you. And thank you to all our listeners. Again, uh, the easiest way to support small business: like, comment, share, engage with the business, and feel like if you want to buy something, totally okay too. Um, Again, this is another episode of Small Business Big Dreams, and I'm your host, Eric Boll. And until next week, have a good one. And that wraps up another episode of Small Business Big Dreams. Thank you for joining us. Please support us and these incredible small businesses by sharing this podcast with friends, family, and on your social networks. Spreading the word not just helps us grow, but more importantly, supports the dreams of our local entrepreneurs. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform. But if you have a small business we should hear about, reach out to us on social media or our website. We would love to hear from you. Until next week, I'm your host, Eric Bolt. Keep supporting small businesses and goodbye for now.